Welcome back to Ox Tools, I'm Tom. So uh, we put together a, uh, a tasty mix of meatloaf here. Um, this one's a little bit uh, a little bit weird. I'm getting ready to load up and um, go on a trip with a friend of mine uh, down to uh, southern Arizona, uh, pretty close to the Mexican border. Um, we're going to be uh, installing a, uh, a telescope enclosure down there. Um, Anyway, I helped them with it, uh, I don't know, a year or so ago, and uh, we did a small one in Southern California, and well, this is a bigger one in, uh, in Arizona, uh, for the same group, actually, from Caltech. Um, so, uh, anyway, uh, if you're watching this on Monday, uh, that's where I'll be. I'll be on top of Mount Hopkins, um, probably freezing my ass off uh, <laughs> up there. I think it's pretty cold at 8,200 feet uh, this time of year down there. Uh, anyway, we'll be putting this thing together and uh, getting it operational. So, uh, uh, anyway, we've got a few things going on, a little uh, viewer appreciation. Uh, I got a little shout out that we're going to do. Uh, and then I got some, uh, some teaser video for you guys about some upcoming projects uh, just to kind of whet your appetite. So we'll be, uh, we'll be looking at a couple teaser videos. So, uh, uh, <laughs> video us, interrupt us. So, uh, <laughs> Anyway, let's uh, let's pop over to the table and uh, we'll take a look at a few things and uh, and uh, whet your appetite with some uh, some hors d'oeuvres. So, okay, so here's the uh, here's one of the uh, viewer appreciation uh, uh, mail that showed up, and this comes to us all the way from uh, Germany, and this is uh, Frank Kohler, and uh, Frank's a uh, um, he uh, has my books and uh, likes the videos and all that. Um, anyway, he had a, uh, let me, sent me a nice little note here. Uh, he sent me a book. Uh, oh yeah, and then uh, this, is, uh, this is where Frank lives here. This is uh, Spagen, uh, Spagen, Germany. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I kind of looked it up on the internet. It's kind of cool. They have the, a festival where they uh, dress up with these masks and stuff. And uh, it's kind of a neat looking place. Um, so if you're in the area, drop by uh, Spagen and uh, check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, thanks for the postcard, Frank. Anyway, he sent me the uh, kind of the what I would call the German equivalent of Machinery's Handbook, and it's called the uh, um, Book of Cables about Metal. Basically, is what this is, and uh, it's kind of interesting because. I can't read a <laughs> I can't read a word in it uh, except for uh, some of the technical things that are the same, but it's interesting because there's all kinds of setups and uh, you know uh, angular things, gear references, thread references, and you know from years of looking at all this stuff, you can look at it and go, okay, I know what they're talking about there, and you could actually use the data, and that's one kind of interesting thing about engineering work and uh, and scientific stuff is it is it really kind of goes across cultural um, boundaries, uh, uh, you know, kind of traditional cultural boundaries that kind of goes across real well, you know, technical information. Partly because a lot of it is standardized stuff. And um, they spent a lot of time trying to standardize the information and the, the kinds of things that they, uh, uh, that they need out of, the, out of the tables and books and whatnot, you know, so there's... <laughs> I just saw something on punches and dies, right? Um, but they're, you know, they're, I can't pronounce any of these words, you know, they're talking about punch and die clearance here, right? And, you know, there's the angle, and it's the uh, Schneidenplatt, uh, or uh, and the Stimpelpecker, or whatever, you know? <laughs> so, you know, I don't know, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, so it's the, it's the male punch and the female punch, right? Okay. So, anyway, it's just neat. Uh, it's a cool book. Um, I, I like the format. It's tabbed, and um, it's tabbed, and you can, uh, you know, so there's the math and the physics, communication. So communication, right, with a K, and uh, but it's really about drawings and tolerances and uh, and how to illustrate uh, uh, parts. Anyway, Frank, this is really cool. I like it. Um, and um, it'll go in my library. And oh, and you put a nice little note in here. Um, from an enthusiastic follower who lives in Germany. All the best, Frank. So thanks, Frank. Appreciate that. That's a pretty cool gift. All right, and here's some uh, here's some close-ups of the book, so you guys can uh, you guys can see what's in there. Um, 
Like I said, it's just kind of a neat book. Uh, um, it's it's wonderful because it's in color too. That was the other thing I uh, forgot to mention. There's a there's quite a few color things in here. Um, I just like the kind of generally like the format of it. It's pretty cool. So uh, once again, Frank, thank you very much for the book. Yeah, there's a whole thing on threads there. You know, but we could look at that. You know, and you can kind of look through that and you can you know you can see metric and then if you look at the thread profiles you can probably find Whitworth yeah okay so this looks like a Whitworth here but uh, so it's 55 degree rounded crest rounded troughs but it looks like they got a uh, actually have a German word for Whitworth um, huh okay that's kind of cool Sometimes you see, you know, uh, you know, personal name or, you know, people names, you know, that they transfer straight across, but that's kind of cool. Anyway, thanks, Frank. Okay, so this next one here, who doesn't like a hammer, okay? And uh, this comes to us from uh, Bruce Gratton Sr., and um, he sent me a little box and uh, uh, with a little note here. And uh, he didn't say where he got this here. I saw this hammer and thought it would be a nice addition to your collection. Happy festivities, Bruce Gratton Sr. Um, so this is, they call this a deadhead here. And uh, I don't, it doesn't have any, um, any shot in it or anything like that. But for a rubber hammer, this has actually got a little bit of mass to it. And I don't know, I don't know if I want to hit this, uh, I'll hit here. But, when I, you know, I swatted a couple things with it, it's kind of interesting because it doesn't have a lot of rebound, you know, for a rubber hammer. So um, I haven't, I haven't gone to the uh, S Wing um, website to check this out and see what their, see what their claims to fame here. But they call it a, a deadhead mallet, and kind of neat because you know most rubber hammers are pretty. Um, ineffective although this one seems like it uh, it's got a pretty good swat to it uh, density is uh, I don't know uh, kind of shoe heel density there maybe a little softer um, and um, anyway kind of a cool hammer nice handle it's brand new thank you thank you Bruce this is uh, this is pretty cool you know who doesn't like a hammer so uh, uh, S-wing uh, deadhead thanks Okay, so this next one, <clears throat> this next one here, so what this is, is, um, um, you know, we were fiddling around with the little Tonka truck, and, um, you know, I mentioned that, uh, hey, if you guys want to see me make a, a little ladder, um, go ahead and throw it up in the comments. Well, I got a pretty strong response, people want to see a, a ladder for that thing, so I said, well, Okay, you know, we'll make a ladder, and then I so I made a little prototype here, um, just to fool around with it a little bit, and I've kind of decided that uh, um, since people are so interested in seeing this, I thought we'd we'd make it a little more complicated, and make it out of brass. Okay, and that's what this is. This is brass here, and um, the the little side rails here. I I formed these out of uh, brass sheet metal, and then the uh, the rungs here are made up out of uh, this uh, um, this hobby tubing here, right? And so there's an inner and an outer, and then um, I swaged over the ends, and, th and this stuff swage is really nice here, so it's not really a problem like uh, <laughs> like the, ri the steel rivets I made the other day. Anyway, this stuff swages over real nice. So this was just kind of a scale prototype to see what it looks like and I'm gonna change the sizes a little bit but this is an upcoming this is a teaser here guys um, so this is a uh, gonna be an upcoming video and uh, and this is just kinda wet your appetite a little bit and uh, so we'll we'll be shearing these and uh, making a, a form to form these around so that they all come out nice and uniform and, um, and if I can figure a cool way to do it um, uh, we might this thing will be about nine inches long. Uh, it seems about the right scale, but it'd be really boss to have a uh, an extension ladder so that it goes out to 18 inches roughly or something. And uh, so if I can figure out how to do that and um, uh, not kill myself um, uh, doing it, then uh, we'll do that. So anyway, teaser video. So thanks.
Pretty cool. Okay, so the next uh, little teaser segment here is um, I got a real strong response with the um, about the uh, R8 collet thing, and um, so we're going to step up the testing on this in an upcoming video here. And we looked at the Lindex collets, and uh, so now I have in my arsenal I have a hard inch collet here, and I paid dearly for that. And then I have a the, the absolute cheapest one I can find, and. Um, um, this is an offshore, this is Interstate brand, okay? And these are all half inch ID here. Um, and I got that. So um, I also bought a couple of different uh, uh, test rods. And uh, these are perforating punches here for, uh, um, or ejector pins for uh, uh, injection molds, uh, which are hard and pretty straight. And then, um, uh, we have a, our original test pin here, and I set it up with a, uh, a little clocking wheel here so that we can, uh, we can clock this in a meaningful way. Uh, so we're going to take a look at all that. We're going to uh, go a little deeper with these guys here. So once again, it's a teaser video here, uh, a little teaser segment for you. This is coming up, and uh, we're going uh, to tear this one up, okay? So, oh, <laughs> um, Somebody mentioned that this was Mark Lindex, and uh, uh, you were right, it was, but that was me writing uh, Sharpie on the side, so it's not actually marked uh, by the factory anywhere. Okay, anyway, I'll see you soon on this one. All right, so I figured, I'd, uh, you know, somebody mentioned the, um, the talking hands here, so I figured maybe i uh, get my mug in front of the camera a little bit. Um, couple of things here. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, uh, a couple, uh, couple guys up in uh, Puget Sound and uh, in particular uh, uh, Braden Stroud and all the tool makers in the uh, Puget Sound Naval Shipyard. Um, Braden sent me a really nice letter uh, via email and uh, he actually, uh, it's possible that he works on the floor above where my old mentor Charlie worked uh, up there during World War II. So uh, actually really, a really nice uh, letter and um, he likes the videos and uh, he actually, uh, I guess they have a meeting every Thursday or something like that in the morning and uh, they talk about stuff and uh, he's using some of the stuff off of the show here uh, uh, to, to show the, uh, the apprentices and uh, about setups and measuring and things like that. Anyway, it's pretty cool and really nice to hear. And you know, for guys like me and Adam and Keith and all all the boys, um, it's really nice to get that feedback. Totally appreciate it, guys. So uh, keep up the good work up there. Uh, love to come visit you sometime and check out what you're working on. Uh, I don't know if that's possible, but uh, uh, I'd love to see it. Um, so anyway, Braden, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, now, another thing is, uh, last week we showed a, uh, um, a couple of pictures of, uh, um, that we needed a little bit of help with, and one was uh, this Model 61, I think it was a 61, uh, Monarch Toolmaker's lathe, and you guys really stepped up on that, that's totally awesome, and it just, you know, this community that we have here that we that we built up is is really powerful and you guys can see how powerful that is. Is you know, one of us waves a flag and asks for a little bit of help and you guys really stepped up and uh, it's just nice. Um, so um, Rick uh, we Rick's lay Rick's lay the he knows uh, now what that shaft is for and um, and how it's used. Adam threw up a video on that. Somebody just knocked on the door over here. So uh, let me uh, let me just cut away here for a second. Sorry for the interruption. I'll be right back. Well, that was a heck of an interruption. That was my friend Marty came over, and uh, it's about two and a half hours later now, and we were yapping away and crawling all over the shop. Anyway, uh, um, the only other thing I wanted to mention was the. Uh, the uh, milling machine vise that we were trying to identify. So uh, I kind of expected uh, um, that uh, folks might have been able to ID that. So I was kind of surprised that uh, um, nobody knew exactly what it was. So it's still a mystery. 
Um, I'll cut away real quick here and show you a, a picture of it again. And it's got that distinctive P on it there that um, uh, it might be a palm grin. Uh, that's the current, uh, what, what we think it might be is a palm grin. But if anybody knows what that is or they can figure out what it is, uh, throw it up in the comments. Uh, we'd much appreciate it. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Okay, so um, where I'm going, where Mount Hopkins is and where I'm going uh, and where I'll be on Monday is right about there right in the it says green valley there i'll be right about where the r is on green valley in fact we're staying in green valley so we're driving from california to south of uh, tucson and then the mountains a little bit uh, east of uh, what is that highway 19 there anyway so mount hopkins check it out on the satellite and uh, you can see the uh the cool observatory there so that's where mr ox will be it's a problem Steel, man, it's heavy, right? Let's keep that up in there. And then I'm just holding it in by hand. I'm just gonna kind of snug these two jaws up here that I loosened. At least I think it's the two jaws that I loosened.